Well, since you last saw me, the weather's really improved and finally it feels like springtime is here. So this morning, I've got the carp rods out again and I'm trying to be one step ahead this morning. I haven't seen a huge amount of fish here. The lake gets shallower in this swim and I think with this sun coming out today, hopefully by lunchtime there'll be a few carp out there. So I've got two rigs out there, a light scattering and boilies, and I'm trying to predict where they're going to turn up today. I'm up the opposite end of the lake today and there's a lot more sort of shallow weedy areas up here. The carp normally turn up in these spots. So fingers crossed, I get a couple of bites today. What I like about this area in the early spring is it's quite a bit shallower than the rest of the lake and it warms up a little bit quicker. And the best way to find these carp is to have a walk around the lake and on these bright sunny spring days, this is where you normally see a few fish. The swim I'm fishing today is a little channel behind one of the islands and the water in this swim as I go further left gets shallower and shallower and there's quite a bit of light weed out there so I normally have to have a few casts around with just a lead to find a few clear spots. But if you get a couple of baits on those clear spots between the weed you can normally snatch a bite or two. Once the springtime gets here, I think whatever the weather does, the longer daylight hours just wakes the lake up. It wakes the fishing up and you, you noticeably start getting more chances and you can just see nature wakes up. And even though we've had quite a cold start to the spring this year, I've managed to snatch quite a few bites. Since you last saw me and I caught that lovely 40 pound common up the far end, I've had quite a few carp since then. and I've even managed to get a couple off the surface. On those nice hot days when you walk around the lake and you can suddenly see more and more fish in the surface layers, that's the time to get the dog biscuits out. And generally, if it's not too windy and it's nice and warm, they'll be up for a dog biscuit. And if I'm honest, the, the conditions look a bit better today. And if this sun keeps shining, maybe one or two fish will move into these shallows. But I've got two rods out, I've got a light scatter and a bait, and I think I've just got to sit on my hands and hope they turn up. Well, there we go, the rods have been out about an hour. Typically, the cameraman had gone off to get some drone footage and the left-hand rod has ripped off. If it will behave itself for a quick look, uh, one of Homersfield's older looking mirrors, this one. It really did scrap and I'm not surprised with that big tail. But I'm really pleased with that. I can't think he's the only one in this shallow part of the lake, so hopefully throughout the day I'll get another chance or two. This one came on the left-hand rod, which it's only about 20 or 30 yards out. I had a little lead round to find a clear patch amongst the weed and real simple fishing. A little PVA bag of crumbled boilies and about 15 or 20 boilies thrown in the area. The main thing is to fish where the fish are. Normally put a new rig on after each fish just to make sure the hook's nice and sharp. And it's a real simple snowman presentation. I use quite a big bait here at Homersfield because I like to make them sort of roach proof. And I have found with these slightly bigger baits, I have been getting a slightly better average size this year. So it doesn't need to be complicated, a nice sharp hook and a real smelly bait. And before I cast it out, I will just nick a little PVA bag of crumbled and whole boilies on there. You'll see there's a piece of dissolvable foam in that bag. And the reason for that is once I've cast out, after a few minutes, that foam will pop up to the top then I can feed a few boilies around where the foam comes up. So it just gives me an idea exactly where my rig lands so I can put 20 or 30 freebies around it as well. But the first thing I'm going to do, before I even put the new rig on, like I said, there's quite a bit of weed out here. So I'll have a couple of casts with a lead just to find a nice clean drop, put the line in the line clip, then I can reel it in, put the rig on and put it back on that spot. The main reason for the snowman, I think they quite like a little bit of colour and there's, there's neutral buoyancy to it, it'll just settle on the bottom. So when the carp picks it up, in theory, in my mind, it'll go a bit further back in the carp's mouth, which means I get a slightly better hook hold and hopefully land more fish. You might notice on the back of the hair, there's a little float stop I put on there and that just keeps the bait at the end of the hair. Once I've put the bait on, I slide the float stop up and it makes sure that it doesn't slide back down at the back of the hook. So before I even put that new rig on, like I mentioned before, I've got a rough idea where I caught that fish looking at the trees on the skyline. And I like to just have a quick cast with the lead to make sure I get a nice clean drop. Well, 
Lovely. I felt that lead tap down, so I know it's not in a clump of weed. So I'll put the line in the line clip. And then when I reel it in, I can put that new rig on and one of those little mesh bags and hopefully drop it in the same spot. You can see a little bit of weed on there, but that's just where I've reeled it in from the spot. Obviously make sure I'm crouched in the same position. Yeah, I'm happy with that one, so I'm probably gonna run around there before that. I want to see that foam nugget come up. It's now mid-spring and it's so nice to see the trees come into life, seeing them, some leaf on them. Um, it's a really nice time to be watching the lake as well, not just for the fish point of view, but um, also for the wildlife. As soon as the sun starts to come out, we start seeing carp on the surface. They're obviously getting ready to spawn as well. The bigger fish are obviously starting to egg up, as we call it. So that's an interesting time. So we know that they're gonna be spawning within the next few weeks. So that's always an interesting thing to watch around the lake. The anglers get quite excited as well at this time of the year because the fish are starting to, to wake up, feed on their baits, um, start coming out at some bigger weights as well. So that's good. And also from uh, May the 15th, we close for four weeks now. So we have a very small sort of like close season. So it allows the fish to relax and hopefully in that period spawn, spawn naturally, spawn well, recover from the spawning allow them to have a little bit of time where they can put some food into them, so build up some strength, and uh, let the anglers come back on the 16th of June. Go on, no. Yep. Then about to do a talk and piece to camera and the left hand rod has gone again. I'll concentrate a little bit, because like I said, there's still a it's a bit of weed growth now, now we're getting into the spring. He's doing his best to get under that margin. The bites are coming a little bit more regular now, the weather's warming up. Every bite gets your heart racing. Normally once you get them a, a mouthful of air and they normally give up a little bit. Lovely job. What a lovely clean young common. I Hopefully bump into it in a few years, where it's put a few pounds on, but still really pleased to catch it. And a sign that spring is finally here. So I think I'm gonna slip this little fella straight back and get the rod back on the spot and see if we can get a third one. Here you go, buddy. I do have a slightly, well, I think I have a slightly different approach to some of the other anglers is, I don't often bivvy up on the lake and I feel I fish much more effectively if I just do day sessions with a lot less kit and stay more mobile. I guess I, I see myself as I'm fishing rather than camping. Um, I, you know, I've got a couple of days at my disposal this week and I could have bivvied up in one swim and played the waiting game, but I'm probably a bit too impatient for that. So I, I make a conscious effort to walk around the lake and find fish and try to make sure that I'm always sitting in front of the fish. This approach seems to be paying off this year and I am actually making a little log of how many fish I'm catching. And from the 1st of January, that small common carp I think is number 36. And there's been a handful of nice 30 pounders, including that 43. So it's a style of fishing, as silly as it sounds, I feel like I'm fishing rather than camping. And I get to go home and sleep in a comfy bed at night as well. So it ticks all the boxes for me. And I think I'll carry on fishing like this most of the year because it just suits my style of angling. I've come a bit further down the lake today. It's, it's been so cold this morning. I think we actually had a ground frost this morning and the wind has finally dropped and the sun has finally come out. But I'll be honest, it's been tough this morning. I've seen a few fish show in the area, but it, I've, got, you know, I've got my big coat on and it's definitely a lot colder than yesterday. But I'm feeling a bit more confident. Like I say, the sun's come out, that wind has dropped and it's starting to feel like it might actually happen. But I've got two rods out just off the drop off of this island. I haven't gone too close because it's quite shallow on the, the edge of the island. So I've just come down to about eight foot of water, a nice spread of bait. I decided to drop into this swim 
So it's a bit further down the lake. We fished in quite shallow water yesterday. It was probably only about three, three and a half foot deep. And it's nowhere near as warm today. So I think probably fishing this slightly deeper water might be a good bet. Plus, if I'm honest, when I packed up yesterday, I did see one or two nice fish showing out here on dusk. So it's quite keen to drop in here this morning. But as I've mentioned before, I haven't got too much kit with me. So I've, if I see signs of fish anywhere, I can quickly move. Yeah, what we got? Seems to have warmed up a little bit now and the, the right hand rod has just pulled up tight and I'm in for another fish, so. I don't know if it's a big one or not, but it's a bite. I think half the excitement here is you don't know whether you've got a 10 pound carp or a 50 pound carp when that bobbin pulls up. I wouldn't think this is a 50 pound carp, but pleased all the same. Well, after a slow start this morning and Losing one to a hook pull. I finally managed to get one. Oh, a lovely mirror carp that is. A nice, dark, deep bodied mirror. It's been really cold today, considering the time of the year. And I've got another one in the sling as well. I've pretty much had a double take. I might get Martin in to help me and we can show you both the fish together. I've got a, a nice common in the retainer sling as well. Well, there we go. I'd have been over the moon with one bite today. It's quite a bit colder than it was yesterday and I've moved into some slightly deeper water further up the lake. As soon as I got my first bite, I quite quickly got my second bite. So I've got Martin in to give me a hand so I can show both the fish off at once. And it's nice to get one of each, a mirror and a really nice looking common. So I'm really pleased with that. And hopefully this afternoon, it means they've woke up a little bit and I might get another one before I go home. But how about that for a lovely brace? New penny springs to mind. I think it's time for two fresh rigs. Reposition both baits, get a bit more bait over the top and go from there, see if we can get another one. But it might look a little bit agricultural, but quite a long hair with a big snowman bait. Normally sorts out the slightly better fish. There we go, it's out there quite a way at the minute. I've been fishing alongside of the island. I'd say just on the bottom of the drop off in the slightly deeper water, mainly because the temperature's dropped a bit today. I'm gonna take it steady. I, I normally find if I keep the rod tip quite low and just pump them towards me, they behave themselves a bit better. And then when he gets close in, I'll lift the rod up and think about the landing net. But there's a bit of weight there. It might be a nice one. We'll, we'll find out shortly. There's no need to pull the head off. I like to take it nice and steady. To be honest, sometimes you wait a while for a bite and this is the best bit. So I enjoy the fight. I just keep everything, try and stay nice and calm. Keep a nice steady pressure on and just wait until they're ready. Like he's just about ready, nearly. There we go, lovely. Now it's warmed up slightly. I've had another bite there, coming along nicely now. And a bit smaller this one, but still another nice common. Little male common, that one. Quite an angry little common, as you can see. So if you keep them nice and low over the unhooking mat, and then if they do start to flip, you can just lay them down nice and easily. But really pleased with that one, another bite and a sign that springtime is here. So I'm gonna slip this one back and maybe I might get one more before I go home. So the year was 1971. Peter Stacey had had two 30 pound carp from one of the lakes. These had made the front pages of the Angling Press, the Angling Times and the Angler's Mail. And of course, back then that was quite a, quite a feat of fishing and obviously made people from all over the country realise that there was some substantial carp 
um, in the lakes. You have to remember back then that even from Richard Walker's fish of in 1952 of 44 pounds right up until the, the, the late 60s there was only really a handful of carp that had been caught over 35 pounds and the majority of them had come from Redmire so although Redmire was clouded in mystique that nobody could fish suddenly there was these lakes in Norfolk that was accessible to all fishermen from all over the country that's when we started to see a huge increase in the number of anglers that was coming to fish there. What we started to see was uh, little groups from different areas. We'd already seen there was a little group of anglers that were from Norfolk. Um, they included people like Graham Marshall, John Dunn, Derek Cunningham, and uh, these were regulars that came to the lakes, were starting to come to the lakes early 1970s. Uh, then we saw groups of anglers that were coming from Essex and Kent, uh, Bedfordshire, and slowly these little cliques started to arrive every weekend. Um, they included people like John Marvin, uh, and then people that were, became really well known later on, obviously Lenny Middleton, Kevin Maddox, uh, Rod Hutchinson, all these people started to turn up during the 1970s. Jeremy Wade used to fish there in the early 1970s. When we look back, it certainly was the birthplace and the blueprint of the modern day carp angler that we see today. Also you have to remember I think it was in 1969 uh, the British Carp Study Group had started so again that was a, supposed to be a, a group of carp anglers that were maybe achieving better catches or, or travelling around the country catching more carp and we certainly saw that sort of in that era the development of not only carp associations and carp clubs but obviously an improvement in the carp angler as well. One thing that made Waveney Valley very different as well, because there were six lakes and they were well stocked, um, they allowed anglers to catch fish all year round. Again, that was really important for them because again, across the country, you have to remember, back in 1970, 71, 72 and 73, um, there were very few places that you could just go to a public day fishing water and catch fish of those sizes. Of course, for myself, I was extremely fortunate. A, I enjoyed fishing. I'd been fishing at Waveney Valley Lake since I was, well, since I could hold a fishing rod. Um, and I was also fortunate that I was meeting these guys who were keen on carp fishing. These guys weren't well known or named in the industry as they are looked back upon now. Um, for the simple reason that they, there was no industry, there was no fame to it. Um, so it's easy to look back now and say, oh, that's the great Lenny Middleton who created the hair rig, or Kevin Maddox who wrote Carp Fever, or Rod Hutchinson. Those guys back then didn't know that. They were just coming to fish and catch carp, not turn it into a business or an industry or make it what it was today. Also what happened at the same time, We'd brought Waveney Valley Lakes in 1962 and were developing that. And then just by sheer chance, um, another property came up for sale, which was called Fisher's Green. And this was a 25 acre site that um, had a dilapidated house on it that was dating back to about the 1700s, we think. There was two lakes on it. One was about two and a half acres and one was eight acres. And there was also a stretch of the River Lee um, of about a mile in length. This site came up for sale. And in 1970, as a family, we bought the property. This was the creation of Fisher's Green, where in those over those few years uh, we would bring in more big fish the river lee was famous for its barbel and chub fishing and it also allowed us to have the land to build a carp farm which we started in 1974. so with the growth of waveney valley lakes and with fishers green in essex this was most probably the most important time for us as developing our business with carp fisheries and carp farms <laughs>